Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the toast to a very special, gorgeous, delightful, st stunning episode with somebody we love here at the toast. Somebody who's kind of like so in the news right now, like Scandaval. It's Stassi. I know I'm in the news right now because of Scandaval. I know. It's so weird. It's like all the like um the outside players that technically have nothing to do with it. Like I have nothing to do with it. You uh, that's not true because you are responsible for the most pointed, the most iconic line. You self egotistical piece of <laughs> shit because that's literally exactly what it was I feel like proud of myself I've been knowing I knew Sandoval was what he is like I knew but like some people like thought he was cute and like some people of the show who fans of the show like like to watch him like I've been knowing forever and I feel like you have too no I always got so frustrated watching the show because I'm like god he seems like such a hero when I watch it but like no I know you I know, know. <laughs> and so to be honest ever since you left the show I haven't really craved your presence there because the show was not good like for for a considerable amount of time until obviously this whole thing happened and I did kind of crave someone who was on the right, right side of history for so many years and that was you wait do you know how good that feels to be on the right side of history I feel like so often I'm not same literally <laughs> so like, same oh uh, that feels amazing yeah no I, I do keep saying that like what a wasted opportunity this was. You know, if if, I, if there was one season I would have liked to have been in. Yeah, duh. It probably would have been this one. So I could have just given like a big old I told you so. A hundred percent. And I asked Jax this when he was on the podcast and he was actually pretty honest. I said like, is there any sort of FOMO with not FOMO or even like a little resentment about like the show becoming literally the biggest thing in pop culture. And the show was built off the backs of people like you and Jax. Yeah. Is there any sort of like... Of course there are moments where it's like, oh wow, like seeing how big it's gotten, it's like when we're not there, mm -hmm. I think that that's human nature. Of course, I mean, I would feel, be so not okay. To feel a little bit, then you get insecure about like, was I not good enough? Mm -hmm. Did I not do, like, it, it's a weird, it's, it's a weird convoluted kind of nuanced yeah. feeling because it's like, I'm happy that I'm not in that, in that but at the same time, Oh, I miss, it makes you miss it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like just based as like an outsider watching your life on social media, like you really look like you're thriving, you're pregnant again, you look so beautiful. Okay. That like you don't, I feel like for a while, like the show was like really the center of your universe and now you have such a full life outside of it. Yeah, no, like, cause when I think about like, what would that be like to film again? Mm -hmm my life is so different yeah. where yes Vanderpump Rules used to be the center of my world mm -hmm. I I I organized my life around the show yeah so and now I, I just I I couldn't imagine going to the places and doing the things that would be required from being on a show like Banner pump rules. Yeah, I have to imagine at like the height of it when you guys were so young and like really just like drinking all the time, like it was so toxic. God, no, I totally miss drinking all the time. I know. You know, we only have a little while left. And you, uh, how far along are you? <laughs> um, um, seven months. And you're having a boy. Yeah. And are you so excited? No, ridiculously excited because I am not the favorite in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, Bo is Hartford's favorite. Daddy's girl. And it's about time. I am number one. That's hurtful. I'm not going to lie. No, wait, like, really, I've cried multiple, multiple times. I mean, sobbing, dry heaving, crying because I feel left out in my own house. I mean, you literally gave birth to no, her. No, it's like she doesn't understand. She doesn't realize. She will. One day I'm going to slap the sense into her. She <laughs> will understand one day. And I feel like that's like a huge part of growing up. It's like you actually end up like having so much gratitude and respect for your parents, like dealing with you. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, no, your time is coming, Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look great. You're just like doing the most. Honestly, you exhaust me. Like, I'm a, a deeply lazy person. And no, I'm, you're not. And I'm not even pregnant. No, Claudia, you're not. No, no, I really am. Like, at my core, I'm like a lazy slob. And I love that about myself. It's like a cornerstone of my personality. <laughs> you are doing the most, and you're so pregnant. Okay, this is the thing. My first pregnancy was during COVID. I yes. was not allowed to leave my house. All I could do was sit around and watch Outlander, The Great British Bake Off Show, and bake sweets mm -hmm. and eat them all day long sounds like heaven i didn't get to put on outfits yeah. i didn't do anything so i that was one of the reasons i was scared to get pregnant for a second time because i have all of this it's like i feel like a little triggered like yeah oh my god does that mean that i'm going to be confined to my house again mm -hmm. and so i am trying to do the most 
because the first time I did nothing. That's a good explanation. You know? And now you're like dressing up your bump, which you never got to do because you were probably in pajamas no. all day. Yes. And you look so good on tour. Like I came to see your show. It was so good. You looked like I wanted to kill you. Like Thank you look you. so beautiful. And you wear shoes that like I could never wear and, and you're pregnant. Well, th that is because they make me feel so much better about myself. Mm -hmm. Like when I put a heel on, I mean, I instantly, my, my self-esteem just yeah. rises so immensely. So does mine, because like, then my legs look longer. Like, yes. You can't really see this, the cellulite. Like, exactly. That I get. And there's nothing worse than when you're on tour, and then you see everyone posting the videos of you, and they're all from down low. Oh. And you're like, I'm a troll. I'm a beast. I hate myself. So yeah, the higher the heel. That yeah. is such a niche reference <laughs> and I could not agree more that is probably one of my least favorite things about being a mm -hmm, performer mm -hmm. is the fact that I'm up on an elevated surface and everybody taking a photo of me is below me yeah like and I don't even wear dresses or skirts I, if I did that would probably bring like another element of panic but like the chin the it's the angle it's, it's horrible horrible it's yes. offensive yeah well I haven't noticed you've just been looking truly Thank radiant you. well I'm only reposting the ones that that I look good in. So. I understand, <laughs> and I respect that. I really, truly do. Well, I saw the show. It was so good. I have to ask you something, because I feel like we're actually in like a similar position with our husbands. Like, okay. when your husband came out on stage, oh my God, like the girlies in the audience were losing their minds. Like, they're obsessed. And he's hysterical, don't get me wrong, but like, he wasn't like doing anything crazy, and they were like loving it. And that's how I feel about my husband. Like, when he comes on the podcast and stuff, it's like, he doesn't even do anything, and everyone's like, that was the best episode ever. Like, we need Ben on every episode. I'm like, really? Like, I'm sitting right here. I'm sitting right here. Like. Uh -huh. What did I, I, I was like doing the most yes. and nobody even noticed I'm me. carrying this. Yeah, no, literally. And it's like, it's kind of hard not to become resentful. Do you agree? You know what? I think of it as this. I feel like because our husbands are really good people and people sense that. I actually genuinely think that. So they could do the least <laughs> and, and, and people receive. would still, yes. And people would still love it because I think that you can just sense and see that like, wow, those are really good men. Yeah, Bo really is the best. No, he is. He is the best person that I know. How did you guys meet? Um, Kristen and Katie introduced us. Oh, damn. Everything comes back to Vanderpump Rules. Everything always fucking comes back to <laughs> How Vanderpump Rules. How did they know Pump him? How did they know him? Um, just mutual friends. Like, he would hang out in some of, like, the circles that, like, Kristen would hang mm -hmm. out with, like, other groups of friends that she had. And... I remember she showed me his Instagram and I was like, oh, he's hot and he looks different than anyone Everyone. else I've ever dated mm -hmm. before. And that's how that happened. You know, one of the great crimes of the last few years is we never really got so much bow on Vanderpump Rules. It was like one or two seasons, but he was, you guys weren't engaged yet. Like, oh, you actually, you got engaged on yeah. the show, but like, there was just like not enough. Like we really never got to like live with you and Bo. But like, how amazing is that? The no, mystery for you. of it. For you. But like, but also we're living in people's heads where mm -hmm. we stopped, where it's, you know, we Honey weren't moon. on it long enough for, yeah. for the producers to be like, you know what, we, we're going to really need to give you a bad season. Yes. Let's like dig. Let's dig That's deep. so true. We never got a bow bad season. <laughs> yeah. So he just lives. He's like permanently frozen in everyone's mind yeah. at the age of like whatever he was back then. Yeah. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Now, the age-old question, you know, I'm sure everyone asks, like, return to reality TV, question mark. Um, I think that if there was something that, Again, I didn't feel like I had to change my life to yeah. be involved in. Yeah. Then I would. Like, yeah. I, I really do miss it. I love it. But I just don't want to disrupt my life. Yeah. Like, it really does actually. Like, it gives me anxiety when I think about... Because I really try and imagine what it would be like to film again... And if I were to change my life, that then affects your relationship. Yep. It, it affects your children. It just it affects family members. It's, would you put your kids on the show? It depends on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, by the way, I don't know if you want to respond, but Jax had a lot to say about you when he came on the toast. I heard because I'm a toaster. So obviously I listened. So I was like, oh, you know. Yeah, I honestly, I didn't think he said anything like incriminating no, or bad. No, he didn't say anything bad. He just didn't say the truth. That's right. <laughs> So he basically said, like, he really doesn't know why you're upset with him. And, you know, it was if it's about the wedding, it was just, you know, like his kid's passport last minute, like, didn't come through. This is the thing. I, I would understand mm -hmm. that. Um, it's the fact that, you know, me and Bo had texted him and Brittany weeks prior saying, um, we hear you're talking a little shit oh. about how you're not going to be coming to our wedding, mm -hmm. which is interesting because... You are you RSVP'd. RSVP'd and, and I'm you're our closest, some of our closest friends. So mm -hmm. I, what the fuck is mm -hmm. that? And they denied and denied. 
denied. I gave them the opportunity to back out, to back out. Yes. And they did. not And then as I was getting on the plane, the day I left for the airport to fly to Italy, I got a text from Brittany. So like that's it. That feels um, way more hurtful. Yes. There are lots of friends that couldn't make it to my wedding. And you also couldn't make it to my wedding. You're such a small wedding. Yes. and, And I think that was a huge part of why it hurt even more because I had to cut so many family members, Mm -hmm. so many people that I would have loved to have been there. Mm -hmm. So they took up two spaces. Right. And then we're just, you know, Jax was doing what Jax does and texting, talking shit. Well, that's that's really hurtful to talk shit about someone's wedding. And for him to say, what really bothers me is when, it feels weird to even be talking about, because it's like a year later, and I understand people are like, get over it. I'm like, I am over it, but that doesn't mean that I have to go be besties besties with people again. Um, I think what hurts the most, too, is that he's like, weirder went to their first wedding. I'm like, oh, he did say that. We didn't get to have one. We literally just signed papers Papers and in in your backyard right in katie's backyard during my baby shower during covid with less than 10 people and i had specifically said you guys are just witnessing us signing these Mm -hmm. papers this is not our wedding we're still hoping we can get married in italy like they knew that it wasn't a wedding wedding. it's not a fucking wedding no and also (laughs) that's so funny because the way he said it at first i was like wait stassi has been married before i know he's like her first first wedding yeah i was like wait what am I just saying? I thought Bo was her first husband. Yeah, listen, like I I do, I miss them at times and like I, I love catching, like I, I follow them mm-hmm. still and see what they're up to in their lives and Cruz is so cute mm-hmm. and all of that. But like they hurt me. Yep. They really did. You're and and it feels fun. like I don't, I can't trust them Yeah, anymore. you're totally entitled to like be upset. <laughs> and I had a feeling, I love Jax, but like, you know, I and I relate to Jax in this way. Like I see things through my own lens. And sometimes like when somebody else will recount a story to me, I'm like, no, that's literally not how it happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, I'm telling you I was there. And I'm not a reliable witness. You know, Jackie always says that. Like if I tell Jackie a story, she has to like hear it from someone else to like make sure I'm not lying. And I'm not lying. I just like, no, that's you, how I experienced it. I swear. 100%. No, there are times Bo and I joke all the time because like Bo will remember something and I'm like, you're remembering that I told you this story. You weren't even there. No. He's like, yes, I was there. I'm like, you're not there. You were not there. No, that's so That was a girl's night, Bo. (laughs) Oh, speaking of girls' night, we got some gorgeous um, Instagram story footage from you about the new sandwich shop. Can you give us an update? Like, when is that? It looked ready to go. I feel like it's going to open... this summer i feel like it's like not far off it's so beautiful it's like parisian chic meets like montecito jackie and i both said when when you posted those instagram stories aesthetically it reminded me a lot of you like Thank very you, Parisian. Was, yeah, and there's like blue and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. It was very stossy. Gold touches. It was beautiful. No, I I mean, I'm so happy for them. And I'm happy for myself because I feel like there aren't that many good sandwich mm-hmm. shops in Los Angeles. So I'm like, y'all are going to be on Postmates, right? Right. You know, Uber Eats. I, I just. You think you'll get free sandwiches or you're going to no. support local female owned businesses? I'm going I'm I'm to support. Okay, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Couldn't be me. If I know someone with a restaurant, I'm like, yeah, I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Sir doesn't even give me free food. The really? Way that I have bled out for sir. That's do you if eat I at to, sir. If I were to go in to dinner, I would get a bill. I would get it one hundred percent. Yeah, that's like <laughs> disgusting. It's it's a little wild, but it's okay. Two things. One, can you pull your mic a little bit closer to your mouth? Yes, mind? I'm so sorry. No, I, normally, I have headphones on, so you can hear yourself. So I can hear when I'm yeah. And my second thing is, what is your current relationship status with LVP? Um, every time I see her, she has been so lovely and so nice. Um. I think the last time I saw her, we went to her house for her for Pandora's son's birthday, right. and I'm great, good, great. Okay, good. Yeah. Now you are a big pop culture girly, which is why oh, you're one of fuck yeah, I am. Fav- Let's do this. You're one of my favorite people to co-host with because there's no like, you know, with Ben. Sometimes I have to like be like, so then this happened, I and know. then she's from that movie. You remember her? Yeah. We watched it on the plane. Like, yeah. He, d- you don't require any sort of backstory no, let's explaining. do this shit now before we dive in i do have one sex in the city story and when i have a co-host on i always like to ask them their thoughts on the sex in the city characters because i feel like it sets a good because i have like very i have a hot i have hot takes oh no i we have hot takes although i don't think my takes are hot anymore okay. i think that we've right. all collectively agreed that carrie is the fucking worst okay so <laughs> that's pretty much i just wanted to make sure that you agreed with that yes. because like i hate no if when i tell you like when i meet women who are like no carrie's the best i'm like you need to be weeded out of the world no you 
obviously haven't rewatched the show as like an adult Correct. with responsibilities and friends because she's, as a kid sure yes yeah, she's the most fabulous and she's like the main character so you're like oh she's the best then you rewatch as you get older you're like wait this bitch is the fucking worst so selfish so, so selfish, selfish. <laughs> so financially irresponsible yes that could never be me like literally has that episode where she I always bring this up I'm, I'm sure oh ask like, Charlotte to yes, give her ring. ring are you fucking kidding me yeah no it's like if that episode were to happen nowadays no no that show, no canceled growing up is realizing Carrie was the villain of that show yeah. mm -hmm. and Agreed. honestly we grow up thinking like Miranda's the worst no Miranda's the best <laughs> yep I we, know whenever I say that people are like you're just trying to be a contrarian no. I'm like no I'm not no I'm sorry <laughs> Miranda's so funny mm -hmm. she's such she's so cynical which what makes is what makes yeah. her funny and I feel like that's very New York of her mm -hmm. and I think we all just judged her because she had like weird outfits and like a weird haircut and like that wasn't the vibe we were more into like the fabulosity of the show and she doesn't really contribute in terms of like fabulousness yeah but she is and I'm not talking about the new show because the new show is horrible I'm talking about like the OG show she was the best her and Samantha no I mean I honestly I love Charlotte too me too me too but she's not my favorite but she's not my least favorite I like mean Carrie. I don't have a favorite honestly I'm thinking about it I don't have I mean besides least favorite yeah but yeah no Carrie sucks okay I just wanted to like down with Carrie because like I can't <laughs> I can't with people who are like, Carrie, I'm such a Carrie. I'm like, okay, so you're the worst. Like, All, right. <laughs> All right, you guys, Stassi's going to help me. She's going to do what we do best, the fast five stories that you need to know. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up on what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I mean, everyone knows I'm such a giver. I never think about myself. I'm kidding. But like when you're a friend, a sister, a wife, a daughter, it's just hard to like, you know, really always be thinking about yourself and taking care of your mental health is so important. When we spend all of our time giving, it really can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy gives you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely done online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists for any time, no additional charge. That's the best part of BetterHelp, I think. Like, when you go to therapy, I think it's really common that you meet a therapist and it's just not the right match they're an amazing therapist but it's just not the right match for you it's so it's so personal it's more personal than comedy so BetterHelp takes all that awkwardness out of it it's done entirely online if you want to switch to somebody who you think you might be like better suited with it's just not awkward there's no waiting rooms there's no awkward phone calls it's done entirely online so whatever medium you're most comfortable with like if you want to talk on the phone if you want to video chat if you want to text you can do all that with your therapist from BetterHelp it's so accessible it's more affordable than therapy Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash toast today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash toast. BetterHelp.com slash toast, T-O-A-S-T. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Roback. I think it's safe to say everyone is talking about Roback. Whether it's their performance hoodies, their polos, or their Q-zips, we always make sure to recommend Roback for the man in your life. If you want your man looking good, then get him Roback. Now, of course, the man in your life is important, but what's more important than you? Nothing. And Roback's uh, Squirts, so many of their items are amazing. We're excited to recommend for all of the ladies. They just relieved active Squirts and dresses, and we are obsessed. It's perfect for a day out on the courts, a walk with your dog, a nice jog. You know, it's summertime. We've got to be looking out for our thighs. And wearing a squirt is my favorite summertime hack. I deal with chub rub. I deal with chafing. And wearing a squirt is just the best. There's nothing better. And it's such a cute look. You don't have to worry about like the wind blowing up your skirt. There's a million reasons why you should wear a squirt. And the one from Roback is so cute. Their dresses are so cute. The active dresses feature their trademarked GTG technology so that you don't have to take your dress all the way off when you got to go to the bathroom. Their liner also doesn't ride up. It has great stretch and hidden pockets for all of your essentials, which is the best. Their joggers and hoodie sets are the softest pieces of clothing that we own. If you want to be comfortable, then these joggers and hoodies are for you. We haven't taken them off since we received them. They're just that good. With summer quickly approaching, make sure to get check out Roback while you're at it. We strongly recommend treating yourself as well. Use code toast at Roback.com for a crazy generous 20% off your first order of performance squirts, joggers, and hoodies. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off with the code toast at Roback.com. Oh. And the first one, we haven't had a uh, show since Friday, so there was like so much news. Jackie was so jealous that you were coming in today. I know. Wait, this is so annoying because last time I was I here, know. Jackie wasn't here. I've wanted to have this like, the three of us. I know. 
really just do the damn thing? Maybe me and Jackie were actually talking like after she gives birth. We need to do like an LA week. Yes. So you would be a perfect LA week Please. person. Please. Yeah, uh, don't leave me out. I promise. I will get the fucking FOMO. <laughs> I promise. All right. Kourtney Kardashian has debuted her baby bump days after announcing her pregnancy at Travis Barker's concert. So Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian are welcoming a baby. Two days after announcing they're expecting their first child together, the Kardashian star gave fans a closer look at her pregnancy. She took to Instagram on June 18th and she bared her bump in a series of photos taken at Travis's Blink-182 concert where she made the bi- the big reveal. Um, so there was like a lot of chatter about the big reveal because at first everyone was like, oh my God, Courtney's pregnant. Let's unpack that. Mm-hmm. Then everybody wanted to unpack the announcement. I think a lot of people didn't understand like the pop culture reference and right. thought that she was just she was standing te- there. And that she was telling Travis for the first time. In front of all these Which people. Which is not her vibe. No, no, that not, is not, not their, their vibe. vibe. I mean, he's so fucking up her ass. Like, yes. you think there's one thing that goes on in her body that he doesn't know 100%. about? 100%. He probably could like sense her ovulating just like from her aura. <laughs> like, they're so connected. There's no way, like, there's no way. That, and I don't think people understood that like it's a reference from his old music video where some girl's like standing outside his concert holding a sign that says yeah. Travis, I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. So once you understand that, like, you know for sure that it's not his finding out moment. I think that was her equivalent to like someone like me being a basic bitch and posting a sonogram photo on Instagram. A hundred percent. I thought hers was so creative and so, so cute. Creative. Yeah. I loved it. At first, I didn't understand the reference immediately. So I also was like, wait, is she telling him? And then some people were like accusing them of being fraud jumping. Like he actually knew this is fake. Like people are so no. dumb. Well, no, stop. But now that, now looking at it at a glance, having all the information, I thought it was so cute. What do they think? Do, do people really think that yes. she's going to keep that secret and announce announce to the world the same time she announces to her husband? No, that's so impersonal. Yeah. And they're so like, you know, they're so connected. Yes. She, and by the way, she's pretty far along. She has like a bump. I think oh, she well, once be, I saw the bump, I was like, what oh. do you think? She's like five months. I don't know months. I like think in terms of weeks. Okay. I want to say like she's giving like 17 week energy. So it's between like four and five, right? <laughs> right? I think so. Isn't Honestly, that what it is? Pregnancy math makes... It's, no, it fucking sucks. Literally no sense no. to me. And what makes less sense to me is toddler math. Oh no, I'm good at that. Like how old is Hartford? How, when people ask. Oh, I don't do that anymore. She's two and a half. Okay, she's once not they 30 months. Two, once they turn two, I don't do that anymore. Okay, but she was like 18. She was 23 months You, were, you were saying that? Yeah. <laughs> That confuses me, but like I guess there really is such a difference between like a twenty month and a twenty two month. There right? is like it, it, in terms of milestones, you should know because you have so many nieces yeah. and nephews. Or yes, yeah, so yes. like it is different. They're so different. But like I once st- you turn two, I feel like it. You're like a kid now. Yeah, yeah. Or the terrible two is a real thing. The way I was so excited for this trip. <laughs> The way I was so excited to bring oh, yeah, Hartford. Hartford's in New York. She's in New York. I'm like, I. she's going to be like Hartford at the Carlisle, you know, like mm-hmm. Eloise at the Plaza. But like, yep. she's just like, I am I can't wait. I planned so many things for her. So many gorgeous, Fabulous. fun activities. The way she has channeled the brattiest version Ugh. of herself and had tantrum after tantrum. We've had to leave every dinner and lunch early. Oh, I'm Hartford. just like, I get so, my blood has run cold in public so many yeah. times because I'm just so embarrassed. Do you think she's like jet lagged? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I just, I, <laughs> I just like, it, or it's just Bo like jokes that like, you know, we did go to the Plaza for tea and he's like the ghost, you know, when like in the conjuring, when like a ghost latches onto a family, yep. it's like Eloise latched onto Hartford. And you need to have an exorcism. 100%. But it has been so nice having her here. But yeah, she is, we keep just looking at each other and being like, it's a phase. Like we'll survive. We'll yeah. survive. Terrible twos. That's why they say terrible twos. And I'm sure when you travel without her, it's like so devastating. And then she's it here is. and she's ruining it. Like you can't win. No, I know. Seriously. Damn. Well, I find this news like so cute and shocking because on this show, the Kardashians, um, they had spoken about her. They did like intensive IVF, yeah. IUI. Like she got her eggs retrieved and it just wasn't in the cards and it was really hard on her. And she was like, you know what? It's in God's plan now. So to see somebody who tried so hard and like it didn't work out and then just like kind of, you know, let go of the idea and be like, what happens, happens. For it to happen for her, like I actually think is so sweet. I think that the Kardashians can do anything they put their minds to. I know. Like, I really, what do you think? Can I ask you something about the Kardashians? Please. Have you been on the TikTok like path 
where people are talking about how the Kardashians are on their way out. I have. And Jackie and I, I try and swipe out of it because I don't like that content. Yeah. Jackie and I have spoken about it. I don't yeah. think that they're on their way out. I think they're definitely experiencing like some sort of like flop era. But that's good. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's natural. It's just they haven't really had one this like monumental. But I think it, it was a series of unfortunate events. But the only way to have an epic comeback. Yes. And to or to show any growth or change. Yep is to have a flop era. So like everyone needs a flop era every now and then. And I think something like this, where it's like so wholesome, this this pregnancy, so wholesome, the announcement was not like, you know, tacky or it was just like really sweet. I think things like this really endear people to the Kardashians because at the end of the day, like they are a family and the things that are important to them are really the things that are important to most people. Like, you know, loyalty and they're very, you know, they're religious, like faith. I think a lot of people connect to like a lot of their core values. And so something like this, I think reminds people like they're really at the end of the day, they're just like a family. Yes. You know, Courtney wanted to get pregnant and that was something she struggled with that so many people struggle with. So like this, something like this, I think is really good for the family. And they have had like a hard year in terms of like public perception I think but I don't think they're out no forever. I don't think they're ever gonna be out no no what they, do you what do you think about Kylie Jenner dressing like Sophia Richie now I mean I love it Jackie had a really interesting take on it that like totally changed my perception of I think for a really long time like the cool way of dressing was like very provocative and thoughty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's just not a, a trend I'll ever participate in one because Sings. my body limit limits me in that um but also it's just like not my style my, no I could be the hottest bitch out there I could look like Lala Kent yeah you know what I mean and I would never dress I, I can't like it just I feel uncomfortable same it's not who I am and that's not judging other people who do it's just not who I am and so for Sophia Richie to make dressing modest cool is such a powerful thing because now all these girls who used to like run around with their tits out are now like wearing blazers and slacks it's actually amazing what she's done for the culture okay I I have a hot take Uh, let's hear it I don't like it because I feel like that's already the style that I've had Mm. for so long and now that it's popular everyone's dressing like me (laughs) and then it's gonna become unpopular and i'm still gonna be here left dressing granny chic and then i'm gonna look like i'm just behind on the trend but that is the most you thing ever because you are proudly a basic bitch and now the thing that you love the most your style has become the most kind of common borderline basic yeah I guess you're right now actually another whenever I do like co-hosts I'm always like Jackie and I think this and Jack but Jackie and I were just talking about this how we really feel like strongly that you are not basic wow you are like so different like I feel like you march to the beat of your own drum like you don't give a fuck what anyone thinks and like yes yeah, some of your interests like ranch yeah it's like basic but you really <laughs> at your core like you're not a basic person you're like deeply original okay well it, i think it all depends on on your definition of basic that's true because my definition of basic is just really like being unafraid to lean into the things that you really love and it's like about being like passionate and mm-hmm. excited about things it's like it, taylor swift energy yes i know i know exactly you know what, what i mean about. yeah like that's my Not definition being embarrassed to be excited about something correct like yeah. that's my definition of basic okay so when it comes to that i feel like i'm truly basic that i agree with but when i think it comes to like style and just like aesthetic and your home like your home is so i've never walked in, well i've never thank been in you. your house but i've never seen a house that was styled like that by like a young millennial woman. Wait, thank you. That is one of the best compliments. Like right under like, wow, Sassy, you're a really good mom. Like yeah. <laughs> telling me that like my home style, yeah. and the style of it is. It's so different. Even the house that you bought is like an older, more charming home. I feel like all the houses in LA like look like mental institutions. They're yeah, like totally. made of cement and windows. Like <laughs> you are so different in that sense. And you're so not basic in that. Thank you. But I understand your definition of basic and I agree. And I love that, that Taylor Swift quote. Like people, there's nothing worse than somebody who makes fun of someone for being excited about yes. something who are like why don't you just like lower your voice like excuse me I haven't heard that one no like people who like tell you like calm down when you're excited about something oh, yeah totally yeah um okay the next story is I know something you are it's like so you like it, it's so something you would be obsessed with and I think a lot of people are really kind of quaking about the search and rescue operation no 
that is underway for a submersive submersible touring the wreck of the Titanic, basically a submarine. So officials are in a race against time to find a civilian submarine. They keep calling it a submersible, and I'm not calling it that. A submarine that had five people aboard after it went missing on Sunday in the North Atlantic while voyaging to the wreckage of the Titanic. The 21-foot vessel has four days of emergency capability, the leader of the search and rescue effort said Monday afternoon, as crews with the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guards continued scouring the ocean surface about 900 miles east of Cape Cod and used sonar to listen for sounds far below the surface, which is up to 13,000 feet deep in the area. So there are five people on board the vessel, the vessel which was an expedition to view the wreckage of the Titanic. Um, it was comprised of one pilot and four mission specialists. Um, they haven't identified the five people, but they have figured out who one of the, the people is based on social media, a British businessman based in the United United Arab, Anim, Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. His name is Hamish Harding, is one of the people on the submarine, according to a social media post by the company he owns. So There's this also is, today, this morning, I saw um, one of the people in there is a father and son, mm, and the son is 19 years old. Mm, when I tell you I could not sleep last night, I know I could not sleep. All I, I, I just wanted to look at these these videos these tiktoks everything yep. did you see that it's they did a tour of the submarine it's not big and it's it's no it's the smallest and there's one little round window and it the controller that they use to control it is a ps3 excuse me i'm not fucking joking i didn't make this up it's in multiple tiktoks like in like a an interview well, that they did. Here's what I don't understand because I saw a picture of the submarine. I saw that little window. So if you're going to go all the way down to view the wreckage and there's one tiny little window for five people. I don't understand. The, 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 I don't. Oh, and Jackie also told me a crazy statistic. So they have four days of emergency supplies. I think I saw last night that like they have like probably 96 hours to find it. But Jackie had said like if they wanted to build a submarine that was powerful enough to go down and like find uh, to use for search and rescue, it would take 30 years for that submarine to be built. Like the, the, the equipment in order to properly like find these people actually doesn't exist, which is what's so scary. Oh my God. Well, yeah. also I, I read that the most dangerous rescue mission they've ever done was 11,000 feet higher than what this is. So oh, if wow. they were able to find them, this will be the deepest rescue mission. Right. Like oh, I, the God. way like this is, if I choose, if I allow myself to think about it too much, it will be the only thing I think about. Like, what are they doing right now? No. All yeah. I can... Yeah, yeah, What yeah. are they doing? They're in there right now. Do you think that they're at the point where they've lost hope? Do you think that they're Definitely. playing games? Like, do you, do you think... I don't, I don't know, but like also, and I don't want to like get too dark. Okay, so they say they have four days of emergency supplies. So that obviously means like food, right? Um, and oxygen. Oxygen. So what does that mean? Does and that we're, mean? And we're all, I think we're on like 60 hours now. So, but what does that mean? Does that mean like, I don't, what, is, what happens when you run out of oxygen? Like you just pass out and die? Well, I don't know exactly like the pain. Is right. it like you, do you suffocate? Fuck. But like there's also, like, but see, there's also like still air. They're like in, do you know what I mean? No, but. It's not ox. It's not what right. you can breathe. It's not what you can breathe. But I also read that right now they could be getting hypothermia. Oh, because they're so far down and it's so cold down yeah. there. Yeah. And like, oh my god, there are so many videos on TikTok. Like someone was doing an interview and they're like, he just had lost hope. He the yeah. way that he was interviewing was like he was this Titanic expert or, or submarine Titanic e expert. Yeah. And he's just like, I think that something went wrong immediately, yeah. and they're not even here anymore. And oh, yeah. Like it was like the pressure, the water pressure, like crushed it or something like that. Something went wrong. But also the submarine being 21 feet, that's like not big at all. No. So uh, you're literally looking for a needle in a haystack because you're so far down. But, it's what? But they're supposed to be by the Titanic. It's not like they're scanning a whole that's ocean. That's so true. I'm like, you, you, we know where they went. By the way, if somebody would have asked me where the wreck of the Titanic was, I would not have said 900 miles off the coast of Cape Cod. I literally thought it was like in London. I don't know. Like... Like well, I wasn't saw it from it was from me, London, to, London New York, to New York, but yeah. they were like pretty close or to Boston, I think, but they were like pretty close to Boston. Okay. I didn't realize. So they were like, they were more than halfway there. I think That's unless the wreckage, I kind of floated, but I, I just was shocked at the map. I'm just shocked at the whole thing. I feel like I can't believe we're living in a time where this is happening. Like no, I, I know it, it is. And to know that there, if something hasn't gone wrong, like if they're still there, like right now, as we're talking about this, they're 
working with each other on all like I'm trying to figure out they're going through all of the emotions and all of the like phases of like accepting right that, and like you can't just like disembark like and start swimming because you're literally so far down right yeah no you were just stuck in there and I think if you even like <clears throat> went swimming like not swimming but like if you if they had no, the like pressure, the water pressure, the water pressure would kill you you're like yeah. yeah it's like freezing it's so like the sea level it's like is being crazy shot out into space I right feel like. right so and but this like, is a private what about mission. Peeping and poo poo. Oh my god, the bathroom. No, I was thinking about that. There is like a little toilet on that one, right? But it's you're in there with and it, and there's five people. Yeah. Oh my god, like I'm, I it, it's my worst nightmare. Like, but this isn't like an official government. It it was like a private company mm-hmm. doing this. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a ticket. That's insane to see through one little window. I mean, Taylor had a really good point because I was I asked her about it last night and she was like Taylor Strecker mm-hmm. and she was like you know these billionaires like really wealthy people it's like normal thrill seeking yeah it's a thrill seeking thing like they're they get to experience so much of life mm-hmm. that it's like what can we push push that's like know? everyone going to space that's yeah. also like 250 grand a ticket I would never I would I never. would never I have zero Desire. Honestly, I have zero desire to leave my house on a Friday night. A hundred percent. Like, <laughs> and do you know how uncomfortable that rocket ship is? Like, let's say something happened. We had to like chill in space for a while. Like, there's no bed. There's no TV. No. Like, I am so content here on Earth. Same. Earth has everything I need. Agreed. Uber, seamless. Post like, Uber Eats. Like, there's really, <laughs> there's nothing I don't need that it doesn't exist for me here no, on earth i agree i agree so i will never be and maybe it's just that i'm not rich rich enough but i don't need to to go to space no it's not about being rich enough it's it, no it's about being happy in your life yes. like the, the, these people who pay a quarter of a million dollars to go to space for 30 seconds like seriously what's the point oh, wild this story is so sad it's so scary and it's just like if you think about it too long like if like it's no freaking. that's what I mean like if I th- if I allow my my brain to really go there and, and really think about it I fully spiral and like I I really do recommend everyone looking up like searching on TikTok and seeing all these videos mm-hmm. also everyone in the comment section is like really savage and funny and I'm like this is not this the time. is not the time this is not the time like I'm not one to be like inappropriate yeah. I never out of I, touch I never feel Me that too. way but like yeah you guys they're yeah. dying yeah I down know there. and do you think <clears throat> like I mean then you also have to think about like the human nature element of it it's it could it could tur- very quickly turn like Lord of the Flies you know once you know that like things are not like going to end know that, well. Uh, yeah, you know that the oxygen's going to run out, so right. maybe you kill the other four right. so that you can have more oxygen. Right. <gasps> Until people oh find you. Oh, God. No, like, it's that's what happens. Like, you're kind of... Claudia, in, no, the way that my brain did not go there... You're like, survivor's instinct kicked, kicks in. You know there's only so much food, so much oxygen, like... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. Totally separate. I have to tell you the craziest thing that happened to me last night. I People need to know what happened to me, Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, let me set the scene, okay? I read the spookiest thriller book before bed last night. It was so good. good. It was called Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. I highly recommend. So I'm just like feeling on edge like before bed. I shouldn't have read it before bed, but it was so good. So Ben gets home. He had been to dinner. We like hang out, whatever. We're going to sleep. It's really early. It's like 1030, but I have, we have a long day today because we're driving to Boston. So I was like, you know what? Let's go to bed early. 10.30. My husband, like, one of the things I hate most about him, 10 seconds he could fall asleep. Yeah. No. I, it, he has nothing on his mind. Look at my too. I know. It's so I have to annoying. take, like, massive amounts of melatonin. Yep. Like, Unisom, don't worry. It's pregnancy safe. My doctor's approved Oh, that's approved good to know. It. Yeah. So, I'm just, like, annoyed. And it's, like, 10.30. It's 11. It's 11.30. It's 12. And at about, like, 12.30, Ben is passed out. I'm, like, like I'm not asleep. But I'm, like, feel I'm starting to get tired. But I'm, like, you know what? Let me pee. So, I don't turn on any of the lights. And... <laughs> I'm sitting in the pitch black on the toilet and I'm peeing and I'm just kind of like looking down and I look up and in the doorway of the bathroom, it, there's a man. Okay. There's a man standing there. Okay. And I let out the most <laughs> blood curdling scream. It was actually, you know, I've never been in like, think, you know, not what, thank God, like immense danger before, but that's, I never know. I never knew what sound my voice would make if I was ever in like, <laughs> Fight or flight. Right. right. I I can't. I, I don't even remember. It was blood. Cur- <gasps> like scream. <laughs> and as I'm screaming, <laughs> I realize that the man in front of me has been. <laughs> and <laughs> it's pitch black. So Ben doesn't see me on the toilet. He's 
<laughs> he's trying to pay but oh, he, so he hears, didn't know you were in there he didn't know i was in there and i didn't know he was in there so he's trying to go pee and he hears this, this like by the lawn <laughs> fire crazy scream <laughs> And Ben then lets out, like he was just trying to pee and it's pitch black. He just hears a woman screaming. He starts screaming, like his kind of danger, like danger, danger, scream. <laughs> what does his sound like? Honestly, <laughs> I was so triggered, I don't even remember. We just both, I'm sitting on the toilet. He's standing in the doorway of the bathroom. We're both just screaming. And, you know, after a few seconds, we both realize we're not in danger and that the person, the woman screaming in the bathroom is me right. and the man standing in the doorway is Ben. But when I tell you, like, it took me 25 seconds to, like, realize what was going on to calm down. I literally called my doorman because I'm like, our neighbors are going to think it was like an actual, if somebody had, if you had woken up in the middle of the night with a knife over you, that's the sounds we were making. Correct. Okay. I called I the doorman and I was like, if anybody calls you about a scream, like, it was me. We're fine. It was just like a misunderstanding. But I'm like, I couldn't decide whose fault it was. And I also couldn't decide whose experience was more scary. It was clearly Ben's fault. Like, he didn't realize getting out of bed that I wasn't in the bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... I can imagine for Ben, it's pitch black. He's just going to pee and all of a sudden he hears like the most insane, <laughs> like high pitch. you have like Samara vibes with your hair. What is Samara? Is that the woman? The from ring. The ring, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. But I am a firm belief, like I believe my experience was more scary. Like to just look up and see the shadow of a man standing in your, in your bathroom <laughs> I mean, in the middle of the night when you've already read this book. I don't feel like it's a competition. It no, seems I do. very equal. No, it I think feels mine was very scary. equal. Whose fault was it? Well, it definitely wasn't your fault. Yes, no, I agree. like it definitely wasn't your fault. Whether it was anyone's fault is questionable. That's up for debate. But like, it wasn't yours. And the most insane thing, like I'm shaking, Stassi. Like I, I'm like on the verge of tears. I don't know whether to laugh or cry because the whole thing is so absurd. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually like shaking. I'm like, Ben, like we get back in bed. I'm like, he's passed out. I'm like, you don't want to talk about what just happened. <laughs> he's like so tired. I'm like, are oh you? My God. I'm like, are you okay? Like you're asleep right now. How can you sleep at a time like this? Oh my Passed God. out. <laughs> and then this morning he woke up. I'm like, we need to talk about last night. He's like, what happened? I'm like, what? Wait, like it's a fight that you guys got in. You no, know, that were like that you you went to bed angry and After you woke up and you're like, we need to discuss it. After now. ten seconds, he's like, oh yeah, that was crazy. I'm like, crazy? <laughs> that was psychotic. Oh my god, I totally forgot about that until this morning. Thank you for letting me. Like it was the craziest i have to stop reading thrillers before bed don't you get nervous or like embarrassed that like your neighbors might think that like you're having a domestic like dispute? something dispute like yeah the thing is people in my building are so um like not nosy oh, like they nice. keep to themselves but then i'm like I wish you would be nosy because I'm screaming in the middle of the night. Good point. Good point. Yeah. And the next, I did find out this morning, somebody did call, which like made me, I was like, oh, thank God. Cause if something actually happened, I want, you know, everyone calling once I scream. Yeah. So it made me feel good. But my, the second we stopped screaming, my first instinct it was that's like, like, so New York. I was like, I have to call the doorman because like, it's such a crazy, it was such a crazy sound that I made. <laughs> <laughs> and I was worried about my neighbors. Sounds like it was like a wild animal screech. It yeah. was it was not human. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Isn't that a crazy story? Oh, I'm sorry. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. It is the space to sell anything. Squarespace has the tools that you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. So whatever you're selling, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. You gotta check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So whatever the reason is for wanting to start a website, I feel like you need a website these days, Squarespace is really the best of the best. I have used many different platforms. I've built a lot of websites over the years and I can tell you confidently Squarespace is the easiest one. I don't have a background in computer science or engineering, but for my job, I find myself really needing to make a lot of different websites and I love Squarespace, Squarespace. especially for e-commerce. They make it so easy. E-commerce e websites can be like really unnecessarily confusing and hard to make, but they have so many different great tools at Squarespace, like the traffic overview, you can see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views are trending. You can get insight into the top traffic sources, product device, 
products, device types, browsers, operating systems. But what I really love about Squarespace is their content ownership. You own all the content that you put in on the Squarespace platform. They offer a one-click data portability. Again, if you want to check out Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That code is toast, T-O-A-S-T. Today's episode is also brought to you by Vegamore. We are always trying to do right by our bodies. So when it comes to hair and scalp scalp health, finding a product that actually works and is made with clean ingredients always seems like a trade-off. But with Vegamore, we get products that are made with clean ingredients and give us visibly healthy hair and scalp. Jackie has been on the clean beauty trend for a while. For uh, her hair, she's had a lot of different regrowth phases because she was you know pregnant and then postpartum and I've recently very sadly started to experience hair shedding so I'd never really been looking for products before that helped with that and my immediate go-to was Vegamore because Jackie loved it so many of you guys recommend it we love the grow kit so the value kits like the grow essentials kit is where you get to try more than one amazing product but you also get it at a great savings when you sign up for a monthly subscription you save more and you never run low on the products that you need to take care of your hair the key is consistency for your routine so if you want healthy looking hair, use Vegamore. We use the Grow. I use it daily. The hair serum is amazing. The shampoo and conditioner is also amazing too. We're using it daily. My scalp is flourishing. There's a noticeable difference in my shedding. They sell one bottle of that Grow serum every 15 seconds on their website. That's how good that stuff is. Give yourself the hair you never thought you could have with Vegamore. For a limited time, the Toast listeners get 20% off their first order by going to vegamore.com slash toast and using code toast at checkout. That's Vegamore spelled V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash toast code toast to save 20% off your first order that's v-e-g-a-m-o-u-r dot com slash toast code toast t-o-a-s-t thank you Vegamore, for sponsoring today's episode speaking of a crazy story just trying to segue here bb rexa was hospitalized the cra- like actually the craziest thing and the whole thing was caught on camera i saw so she says she's good after being hit in the face with a phone on stage, which sa- doesn't sound as bad as it actually is. So Biba Rexa was struck in the face and injured by a cell phone during a concert in New York City, and the man who threw it has been arrested. So she was knocked to the ground during her Sunday night show at the rooftop at Pier 17 in Lower Manhattan. The phone hit Bibi on the forehead in the middle of a, a song, splitting her eyebrow and requiring stitches. She was escorted immediately off the stage and treated by a medical team at the venue as seen in footage on TikTok. So the guy who threw the phone, his name is Nicholas Malvagna. He's 27. He's from Manalapan, New Jersey, and he is accused of throwing the phone. He was arrested at the venue, charged with felony assault for using his cell phone as a weapon. The NYPD confirmed to People Magazine. He will be arraigned later Monday. Police confirmed that BB Rexa was taken to a nearby hospital in stable condition. She posted on Instagram sharing what appeared to be like a brutal yeah. wound. Yeah. I'm um, saying I'm good in a nod to her uh, latest hit song. So she's handling it like a champ, but the footage is like really upsetting. I know it's wild. Like I hate this guy. Yes. At first I couldn't tell if it was like an accident. Cause you know, a lot of artists will be like, give me your phone. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe, you know, she wanted to like record something and he tossed it, but it was very like, I wasn't sure, but then no, it looked like a, it was it yeah. was a it was a phone flying through the air overhand, not underhand. But like, who? Okay, so who's gonna pay money to go to a show? Yep, a show where they're gonna use their own phone to hurt so it, it it makes no sense it makes no sense i know and it's like it's not like even something you can do anonymously it's your phone we just open it up and see who's in the background and we know it's you yeah you can't get away with this sort of crime like i want to know like was this fully premeditated and how long like yeah. was he planning it for weeks days that's what so, people are so deeply unwell no 100 percent. and and to, as somebody who toured yeah i know it's my worst nightmare wait the other night when we were on stage all of the sudden there was this deep giant ominous scream oh my God. from someone in the audience we thought it was like we a, thought it was it yeah like we thought like and all of a sudden they were going um you're just a worm with a mustache oh. but when i tell you i thought I no i thought it was it was over it was like the great and powerful oz sounding in this in the audience and me Bo, and taylor froze mm-hmm. and I thought this is it yep. like this is fully it I, I I couldn't even like get the words out to be like everybody get under your seat yep. get under your seat and it was somebody saying you're just a worm with a mustache so I totally know what you're talking about it's like the li- the littlest things when you're on stage you're so vulnerable like yeah the littlest things like 
a footstep or somebody getting up to go to the bathroom yeah that freaks me out like sometimes i'll I'll hear people like walking just to like go to the bar or go to the bathroom, but it sounds because of like the echo on the stage, it sounds like they're coming from behind me and it oh. freaks me out. I'm like always like on edge and it's hard because you're like trying to perform and like, yeah. you know, entertain people, but you're so on edge that I know exactly like sometimes just the tone of someone's voice at the very beginning can just set you yes. off and make you think you're in danger. Yes. So for something like this to actually happen, to actually Rexa, happen. Oh my God. It's my worst nightmare. I feel so bad for her. And she's like having such a good attitude about the whole thing. Like, but how does she ever go and perform again? I don't know. I'd be like that. That's it for me. I know. That's it. I mean, music concerts are more, um, like high energy and I feel like crazier things happen at music concerts but still like how do you even prevent this from happening you, it's not like you, can you take can't people's take phones. people's phones yeah I don't know I'm like I'm so this is like such an upsetting story yeah and I her her face looks like brutal no, it's like a full-blown black eye stitches yeah her eye is purple it's like bulging it's like a major you just think a phone is a phone but a phone is very heavy yes and when you and know, when it's being thrown chucked and when you least expect it, you're singing in your cute outfits. Yeah, yeah. I feel so bad for her. Yeah. It's really upsetting, and I really hope she's okay. Um, and, like, honestly, I, I hope this man gets what's coming to him so that it, like, discourages anyone else from doing this. Completely. Because if people think they can get away with stuff like this, then people are not well. Yes, I know. People are insane. I'm like, I have three shows left. Now I'm fucking scared. I know. I have to, I can't lie. Like, I can't wait for your tour to be over. Like, you've took away, like, my I only know, friend. I'm sorry. I, I don't have a lot. Like, I'm sorry. Literally only three days left. Three, three shows left. Where are the remaining shows? Are there tickets available? I don't, I don't know that there's tickets available. It's LA. Um, oh, that's a big one. Portland. Is that, is that your birthday? It's my birthday. That's exciting. Well, I'm scared about that one because I feel like if there are people that don't like me, they're going to be in LA. And like if they wanted to show up and throw a phone at me, that would be the location. Not to like be so self-promotional, but did you ever read my book? It's okay if you didn't. I did not. That's totally fine. So there is a... Uh, a by the way, I'm literally not I, offended. In all in fairness, the, you didn't send me one? I didn't? No. So if... so. I need to go I'll send out you and, home with a I copy. I need to go and But I'm not, I'm not offended in the slightest. Like, I swear to God, I don't take it personally. Like, my husband, like, I had to literally hold a gun to his head for him to read my book. I know what, it, it's fine. But there is a story in there, actually, that has to deal with Taylor Strecker. When I got canceled, um, I had, like, no work. And I had yeah. no money coming in. So, like, the only thing I could really do to, like, generate revenue and just, like, get out of my house was to do live shows, which is, like, the scariest thing. Yeah. Because you just think... You know, the, you're, you always think your situation is worse than it is, but like mine was pretty bad. And I was like, everyone hates me, everyone hates me. And Taylor Strecker called me like the day of my show. And she was like, I do not want to give you a pit. Like, I don't want to give you anxiety, but I just heard this thing. And I just, I didn't want, I didn't know what to do with this information. So like, I have to give it to you. She's like somebody, I forget who it was, but it was somebody like a reputable who like works in the industry had told Taylor Strecker that there were, people were planning to protest outside my, my show. Uh -huh. And she was like, I don't know what you want to do, but like, I just thought I should tell you. And I'm like, oh. oh my God, thank you. I was so panicky. I mean, I had no choice. It was literally the day of the show. It ended up raining really bad that night and nobody ever protested. And I don't know if that's because the rumor was a lie or because, you know, my sense of self-importance was just like, you know, way blown out of proportion or because it was raining. Um, but it was the scariest night no, of my life. Claudio, the way I would have probably canceled. I know. I thought but about it. Like that is, that's terrifying, especially I know what that feels like yeah. when you're in a situation yep. when you're canceled. And, but it's like canceled, but people get so invested that like, they become maniacal. And yes. And you the, fear, I, you literally do fear. fear for your life at times. The thought of somebody like doing something crazy and like bringing a knife or something is not that far fetched. It's not far fetched. Be like, it happens to people. Yep. Quite far less, often. Yeah. Yes. Far more than you would think than it does. Yes. So that just reminded me of, yes, to have that panic. But no, your LA show is going to be amazing. And the, you're doing the Will Turn? Uh, no, we did the Will Turn. I'm doing mm. the Ace Hotel. I've done it. It's literally the most beautiful. The Ace it's, Hotel? It's, it's insanely gorgeous. And that's what everyone says. All the photos that I keep looking at, I'm like, oh, it looks like the Gilded yes, Age. Yes, it's so you. Yeah. By the way, whatever happened to the show, the Gilded Age? I feel like it was this, coming back. Is it? Yeah. When? Um, I just know that it is like because okay. I researched to be and like you know it wasn't canceled. I know for a fact it was not okay. canceled. It was not as good as I wanted it to be, but I it still fed my soul and it got much better. Like I do think the second season will be very good. Yeah, I think so too. Like the first the first few episodes where they were like setting the scene, I was like, my god, this is so fucking boring. I think that like what made it kind of like not what I thought is like you look at something like Downton Abbey and they have like the real locations. Yeah, it's like you're seeing the you're seeing the actual Claire place ca castle yeah. you're seeing the grounds yep whereas on um gilded age there was so much like cgi yeah. and sets that like no that's actually a really good point that to me it like kind of took 
us out of it. I've- and actually a good segue into our next story is I think one of the things that ruined it was Cynthia Nixon being in it. I not agree that, with you. Not because she's a bad actress. No, she's, I love Cynthia Nixon, but, but I agree with you. she's too famous yeah. to play anything other than Miranda. I completely agree with you. Which is a great segue into our next story. Sarah Jessica Parker and Kristen Davis are both speaking out about Kim Cattrall's big return. We heard from Kim. We did not hear from the other ladies. And now we have. So she uh, spoke to page six and said... According to, uh, I mean, after Kim Cattrall's return, she says, it's been a lot of joy. Okay. That's what she had to say about Kim Cattrall's brief appearance. She also said, it was really fun and exciting and certainly nostalgic. Okay. That the follow-up is better. Yeah. But in no way has it been a lot of joy for SJP. No, I have like a theory and I don't think it's like that far-fetched because it's been made like clear that like, the narrative is that Kim Cattrall is the one who's difficult. None of the other ladies got along with her. So it's like when three people say you're difficult, you're difficult, you know? Yeah. So I, I understand that's how it works. But I can totally see a world in which Sarah Jessica Parker is the villain of this story and like Kim Cattrall is the victim. I know I sound crazy. Maybe I'm just biased. Maybe I'm also You seeing, don't sound crazy. This is like a little more popular of an opinion than you would think. But maybe I'm also just seeing the situation through the lens of their characters, which is not fair. I know. I think it's because Sarah Jessica Parker gives like... Um, like trying, it's like she's always trying to look like the goody yeah. two shoes one. Yep. You know what I mean? It's, it's and nobody's like, this, like that. Sorry, and no one's like that all the time. Especially like a big Hollywood star. Yes, like it's okay. Like we want to see a little bit of realness. We yep. want to see a little bit of cattiness. Like, yep. a, like it's it's real. No one is that good all the, the time. time. I agree, and I think that's what so people, people are like start to see through it. Yes, I think it's like the same thing that like the same problem that people have with Meghan Markle. Yes. Is that like, they're like, where's the relatability? You're just trying to be so perfect good and perfect. That's actually a really good comparison. Time. What do you think about her podcast drama? It's fucking wild. It's wild. No, it's like, it's like really wild. And that, that guy, what's his name? Bill Simmons or. Oh, from The Ringer? Yes. Yeah. Who is now a Spotify executive coming oh, out what do you and say? calling them fucking grifters. Well, I mean, I don't think it could be considered a grift because I don't think they got paid their full contract because they didn't deliver. What You don't just get paid immediately. You get paid once you deliver and, and finish certain requirements of you. So I, don't, I think they maybe got like five or six or seven million, but they definitely didn't get the full 20. I mean, I, but I also feel like when you sign a contract- I didn't realize that was Bill Simmons who said that. Yeah, he started The Ringer, yes, and which then, then got acquired it. by Spotify. Yeah, he's, yeah, 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 yeah. I just think that when they signed that contract, they had to have talked about the fact that, okay, we're going to do 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that that was news to anyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do think, I mean, I listened to the podcast and I'm a huge Meghan Markle fan, so I I wanted to like it so bad. I know. I really, I tried so hard, but I think what she's missing is that relatability. I think she's scared to be honest, like really be honest and to really like let her, her flaws show because people are just counts anytime she does anything exactly even and I understand wrong. that yep. she's in that position I understand why she doesn't want to show any weakness or anything that that she feels people could criticize Judge. but that is what we want to see no and that's what really like that's what podcasting is it, it was so overproduced and so scripted yeah. and like so felt like a like a tv show yeah that's not what podcasting is podcasting is sitting here and me being like pull your mic closer like it's so yeah it's like feeling like you are in the room with them yep. and you're friends with them you're talking or you're a fly on the wall yeah and it was not that and yeah. now it's also coming out that like, you know, her voice was actually like added in later. Well, like, I knew that. I could yeah. tell by listening to it. I'm like, Duh. oh, she didn't interview a lot of these people. Some of them she did. Yeah. But like some of them, no. Like, did you read Andy Cohen's recent book? No. I think you would like it. Okay. Well, I feel like it's like weird because you have like a thing with Andy. Like you obviously know him. But it's actually a really good book. It's a lot about parenthood. So I feel like you would like that. Okay. But there's a thing about Meghan Markle in it that I found so interesting. Oh, tell me. So he did her podcast. Yes. And he had said um, they did this really long interview and he brought up uh he said were you silent or were you silenced and he was like really proud of himself for just like putting that in and then they get to the podcast it actually comes out and they cut out his Oprah thing he was really upset about that yeah but then before they aired her inter his interview on the podcast Megan gives you know one of her like pre-recorded spiels right basically saying how she was like kind of nervous to interview Andy because she feels like podcast uh, not podcast excuse me housewives and Bravo like hasn't been great for women and like feminism and he was like what the fuck like you never said that to me in the interview and like maybe if you did we would have had a much more complex and dynamic and interesting conversation and the podcast wouldn't have been so fucking boring right but like to say that 
as like a precursor to the interview and then not bring it up is like so tacky. And, and maybe there is a conversation to be had. I actually, I hate that. I hate that sentiment that people say housewives is bad for women. Like I don't agree with that, but like to say it and then not say it to my face is like so oh, cowardly. I didn't know that. I know it was so interesting. I know. I feel like she just keeps making like all the wrong decisions. Yes. And like, I will forever root for her. Mm -hmm. I really, because I feel like she's in an impossible situation. Situation and she's backed herself into this corner. Yeah. But like, I think deep down, she, like, what she really wants is to do good for the world. Yeah. She wants to live a, a good life, a peaceful life. I'm sure she loves wealth and, mm -hmm. and nice things. Access. And that's fine. All the rest of us like that uh, stuff duh. too. There's nothing wrong with no, that. There's not. I just wish like um, I could be her publicist and I could be like, listen, my strategy for you is to like just you need to like reel it up. You yeah. need to just like or show don't. people who you are. Or don't. Or pull back. Or pull back. But and don't be doing docu-series, books, But they have podcasts. to make money. I know. That's and the thing. And what they have in order to make money is, is their, their story. name and yeah. their stories. Like that's... Yeah. That's what it is. No, you're hundred percent right. It's like a, it's honestly a terrible position to be in. I just wish more people would have compassion for them because like, yes, they are incredibly fucking privileged, mm -hmm. but we have no idea what it's like to be Harry yeah. or Megan or to be a Royal. And like, then if they were to go, if she was to go and try and act right now, she'd be criticized and made fun of. And yeah. that was, that was what she knew. So what do we expect her to do? No, that's fair. That's fair. But if she won't kind of break down that fourth wall and like be like an honest, vulnerable, vulnerable person, which is easy said than done yeah then I don't think these projects are the right projects for her correct yeah yeah no but that's a good point um and then just lastly, Charlotte from Sex and the City, this is what she said. She told The Telegraph last week that while she understands fans are upset Kim Cattrall doesn't have a bigger role in the spinoff, she doesn't have any strong feelings about it. She said, I'm not going to waste energy on it. I can't change anybody. I do understand the fans' feelings, that they're upset. I wish I could fix it, but I can't. It's not in my power. You know, I just... I, I don't know. Like, I... It I'm just, choosing. it reminds me all of like Vanderpump Rules and like oh. when I'm like not friends with someone, I feel like I relate to Kim Cattrall in this situation. That's very not interesting. Not me comparing myself to Kim to the Cattrall, great to the Kim great Cattrall. Kim Cattrall. But like I've, I have felt on the outside so many times, but I feel like the reasons why are valid. Like I'm hurt by certain things. I'm choosing to be on the outside. And then the people that are, are, I guess I'm, I'm against or I'm, I'm, opposing yeah. with, with yeah. I don't know arguing this their their argument is like well we can all get along we're all friends so, so if true. you're the one with the problem and it's so like true. no each of you guys has hurt me I'm deciding to, to not to not be a part, a part of, of that, that anymore like yeah. I choose to have people in my life that I feel like I can trust and and bring happiness and good and enrich it instead of take from it but like so if that means but I'm the only one on the outside, so therefore I must be the bad guy? No, by the way, it's totally giving Vanderpump rules. And I don't think it's so crazy to say that, like, Vanderpump rules, especially in, like, the early days with, like, Jax, Kristen, you, Tom, like, I don't think it's crazy to say that, like, Vanderpump rules was the sex and city of our generation. Like, I, I don't <laughs> think that's the craziest thing to say, do you? Oh, my God, you can say it. I can't. Yeah, no, you can't. But, but like, I, I am going to start thinking it. <laughs> no, like, you are definitely, there's something there. There's, there's a, oh my God, was analogous. I the carry? Oh no. no. Well, maybe because if you look back, I was the absolute worst. No, like but I was loved the worst. You in the moment. They love to hate me. No, actually, you were like always acting like an animal, but like everyone, like nobody cared. <laughs> like they just like loved you no matter what you did. You know, like it kind of is giving carry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is. Oh my god! But then you grew up into a Samantha slash Miranda Thank hybrid. You. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a good place to leave it. You know, our fifth and final story is some Barbie movie news. I'm obsessed with the Barbie movie. I would love to get your take on it. And they did like a really cute, smart little promo thing for it with Architectural Digest. So the Barbie Dream House has opened its doors. Margot Robbie hosted a tour of Barbie's iconic home in a new video for Architectural Digest ahead of the theatrical release of the live action Barbie film. Um, and kind of how they do those like celebrity home tours. They did one for Barbie's house. I yeah. think it's so cute. So she, they showed off the over the top dream house, which features a pool, a bold pink kitchen, a peek -a view, peek -a -boo view, peek a boo view of Barbie's neighbors on the set of the film while she was dressed in character in a light pink and blue checkered crop jacket, high-waisted miniskirt, and a hat. She looked so cute. Her kitchen is uh, has a pink fridge, a round pink breakfast table. She said, not super practical, but nothing is for Barbie. Ugh, I'm just obsessed with this. Um, 
I think this was like the smartest promo. Oh. I I thought it was so smart on on AD's part. I thought it was so smart on Barbie's part. I cannot wait to see this. No, movie. I'm so excited. Every, and everybody who who criticized because I feel like I've already heard criticism. Yeah, mainly about Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I am not understanding. First of all, did Ken have an age that I was unaware of? Um, okay, so I feel like you're talking directly <laughs> to me because I was very critical of Ryan Gosling, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll explain. <laughs> Ken didn't have an age. Exactly. But Ken was flawless. And I'm sorry. Right. Ryan Gosling is extremely hot. He's not flawless. Like, who would you cast? I forget who said this, and I don't want to take credit for it, but I thought it was an amazing call. Austin Butler. He's not flawless. No, he literally doesn't have a wrinkle in sight. Like, not to be ageist or anything, but like, sorry, he. I don't Ryan think Gosling he's that was hot. getting old. Ryan Gosling, you don't think Austin Butler's that hot? Not really. I mean, I, I think he was hot recently when he got like a spray tan for the Oscars. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I love a spray tan. But you might have loved him as Ken. Like, I'm just saying somebody with a perfect face. Like, no, Ryan like, Gosling that, is so That new Jacob Elordi dude. I was thinking that too. He has like a really nice, like, yeah. Ken looking face. Yeah. Like, but not that, to be mean, but like when you look at Margot Robbie, her face is perfection. There's not a, a thing out of place. Like she literally looks like a Barbie doll. Ryan Gosling like was just giving like not like perfection and I know perfection is like an unattainable standard but Margot Robbie did it flawlessly correct okay no I'm just I love Ryan Gosling so same, much same that oh it's like you know it's like when you complain about Blake Lively in the new yes it ends with us it's just yeah you can still love Black L Blake yep. Lively mm -hmm. but just think it's like the wrong fit what do you think about that casting did so, you read the book I didn't read the book but oh. like I have That's now so interesting because you're such a big reader well, I, I've fallen off a little bit. Of I haven't reading? read a book in four months. Really? Get me back on it. Okay. I, I need to like get but back on like it. But you like to read like weird things, right? Like historical fiction. Yeah, but I also like, you guys recommended a lot of shit that, that wasn't historical fiction okay. that I ended up reading and really loved. Like okay. honestly, most of the books that I was reading, I found through you guys oh. or your fans. Well, then or, I have a list for you. Please. What's your favorite type of book? Well, historical fiction. Is oh my well, favorite. duh. But, but like, like, do you like thrillers? I do. I love thrillers. Do you like smut, like romance books? I'm not really into that. I Big mean, mistake. Huge. I mean, I could like try and get there. I'll send but... you a list. Okay. I'll send you a list. Yeah, I need to like get on the wagon again. Yeah, I feel like pregnancy is such a perfect time for reading. No. I've been busy. Yeah, you have. <laughs> but you've also been traveling a lot, and travel is the perfect time for for reading. Yeah. No. Good point. Missed opportunity there. Missed opportunity. Okay, that's fine. Do you ever read the Rose Code? The Rose Code. I don't think I heard of I've heard it's like of a it. popular historical fiction book that I have to read for my book club, and I'm like dreading it because I hate historical fiction. So I was wondering if you had read it. Oh, that sucks that you hate historical fiction. I know. I mean, I don't hate it. I just never choose it. But I've read quite a few that I loved, uh -huh. but it's just never what I reach for. I always reach for like a thriller. Well, like television shows, what do you reach for? Everything. Like okay. I have a wide spectrum. Like I do love like Downton, Gild Gilded Age, but I love you know unscripted I love I'm watching shrinking now I love it I mm -hmm. love Ted Lasso I watch everything no literally historical fiction is the only thing I reach for in like all categories in of TV life. too yeah hmm. movies everything like you love Bridgerton yes it's like the only thing that makes me feel like I I I truly am excited about the content that I'm even my TikTok algorithm yeah I can imagine <laughs> darkness everywhere <laughs> Um, well, what are your thoughts on the Barbie movie in terms of like the trailer we've gotten? Like what, do you think it's going to be good? Oh yes. Yeah. No, I think it's going to be fucking perfect. Margot Robbie like doesn't make bad movies. No, she, I mean, well, I, I don't know. Lately, I feel like her they're movies aren't, artsy, like, they're a little artsy. They're not like hitting yeah. with like the, the rest of us basic yes, bitches. You yes, know what I mean? But I feel like her big budget blockbuster movies are always good. Like I, Tanya, like when she's doing the most for a movie. Yeah. I, no, you know, you're I just, not wrong. I don't see how Barbie could be a flop. I know. I, I, I just, I don't see a world where, especially because they've been trying to get this movie made in so, so many long. different ways for so yeah. long that like, they're not going to half-ass it. No, and visually it looks so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, is it really true that like they had a paint, a pink paint shortage in the world? Because of the Barbie movie? Did you read this? I didn't. They said that there was a pink paint shortage in the world because of the Barbie movie because they wanted everything, the pink to be right. so vibrant. Right, I mean, I believe that, but I also feel like for the last few years, there's just been like shortages of everything and they're like COVID, China, you know, like, <laughs> like there was literally a shortage of glitter, remember? Like there's a short, there's a shortage of- There was a shortage of glitter? There was a shortage of like washing machines and cars because of like the microchips that have to go in it. Like there was a shortage of everything. Isn't that weird that we lived through COVID? No, no like, I know. If you like think about it, like, 
sometimes like I'll, I'll sit back and think about like people were so tense and so like high strung and like fighting about everything online and like you know when I think about some of the shit like people used to like m- like riot over on the internet like if that happened today I'm like you guys like people were so, so deeply unwell like it's, it's humiliating no it's literally like we lived through the bubonic plague no literally like, like by the way wild I literally had dinner after after being quarantined in in May I had dinner with my family outside we sat outside. Oh, I remember listening we to all, you reference yeah. this on the toes. We all walked. We sat outside. We had been quarantined for 60 days, uh, not seeing another human. We had a meal outside. You would have thought yeah. we committed genocide yeah. the way people came for us. And now in hindsight, you all look so stupid. And I'm like humiliated for the people who did that. But like, it was terrifying. Like people came. Like, I was like, what? And we weren't taking it lightly. Like Olivia was nine months pregnant. Like we were doing the most. Like, the way people came for us, I was like, and now when hindsight, I'm like, oh my God, like people were, it, like COVID was obviously like an illness, but it was also a mental illness. The way, the way uh, quarantine made people fucking nuts. Nuts. No. Nuts. I completely agree. Like, and now in hindsight, we realize how crazy it was, but like, I'm fully, I'm waiting for my apology. <laughs> I think I'll be waiting quite a while. <laughs> um, well, Stassi, I just love chatting Ooh, with you. I hate that this is over. I know. I mean, if there's anything else you want to chat about, like, we don't have to be done. I mean, I can't, like, think off the top of my head, but I just love doing this with you. You are welcome back anytime. You know that. Thank you. If you liked what you heard here, Stassi is, like, a huge podcast. By the way, I don't know if you've been... The last time you were on the show, you were promoting your book, was Straight Up I with Stassi. Have... Straight Up with Stassi has made kind of a triumphant return. How does it feel? Yeah. You were one of the first podcasters. Not, like, the first ever, but, like, in this space. Honestly, it feels like I just, like, am new. Like, really? I, I do appreciate when people like you are, like, give me that that credit. Yeah, you're an OG. Because you guys are so amazing and so talented and so successful. And I think, like, because I didn't have my podcast for two years, mm-hmm. like, I've I feel like I'm just new and starting out again. Like I'm starting no this way. new business. No way. It's and like, so, first of all, it's like riding a bike. It is, but like it, uh, I forget that I have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Also, podcasting has changed so much since the last time you did it. 100%. I feel like when you were like really starting out, you like you would always go into a studio. Like there was no podcasting from, from home. home. I know. But like COVID really like expedited. Like everybody has like full <laughs> fancy podcast setups. You film in your house, right? Yeah. Like so much changed during that time because of COVID. But no, you're like an OG podcaster straight up with Stasi. How many episodes? You do one a week? One a week, yeah. And it's so good. And I personally like the pop culture hour because I'm obsessed with Telestracker. But check it out. Straight up with Stasi. You also have a Patreon, which we love Patreon over here. Yep. It's patreon.com slash Stasi. Oh, that's such a good link. Yeah, right? Straight into the Stassi's point. Stasi's just so easy. It's so easy. How do you feel about like not being the only famous Stasi? And have you met the other famous Stassi? No. Um, what's it called? Stassi Baby? Yes. Well, she doesn't go by Stassi Baby anymore. She doesn't? No, she like changed all of her Doesn't she names. go by Stoss? Yes. Yes. Do you think that's because of me? I like to think so. I want to think it is too. Yeah. But like, she's like, oh, well, there's already a Stassi, so I'm just Have you ever met? Stassi. No, I've never met her, but I get confused for her. Yeah. Like when I was like, I'm going in to like renew my, my car lease or whatever, mm-hmm. like the guy at the dealership <laughs> would be like, so you're famous. And I think that he's like Vanderpump talking Rules. about Vanderpump Rules. And he'll start being like, so Kylie Jenner, blah, blah, blah. Ah! I'm like, that's not, nah. that's not me. That's not me. You can just roll with it. Maybe you'll get, you know, you'll cut the line or something. See, like it is so annoying having another, per- like the way that I name my babies mm-hmm. is like their name has to be like outside of the 5,000 yep. list. I don't want them to have to share a name with anyone. And it's just, it's like. Do you have a name yeah. for your baby? Oh yeah, that's you know done. It's, gonna, it's done. That's done. That's How did you find it? Done. Um, it was actually the last time I was in New York. Here. It was like the day before I saw you for Taylor's birthday. Mm-hmm. We came, I came up with it. And did you find it like in a book or something? Or um, it just kind of floated into your mind through a list? We had, we had cut, there was a street that I saw. Oh. That I'm like, I like this name, but we already knew someone who was named that. So uh-huh. then we like, like changed yeah. it. Interesting. We changed it. So let me, let me guess. Is it 7th Avenue? <laughs> Seventh Avenue. Seven Clark. actually is a cool name. It is actually a cool name, like, but it's like a little too out there, I think. Well, it reminds me of Harper Seven. It reminds me of Seven by Taylor Swift, a beautiful song. <laughs> um, Wait, can you tell me how you keep getting tickets to Taylor Swift? The yeah. way I've tried, yeah, I've gone. Through, I'll tell you. I've gone through my agency. Okay. I've gone through everyone. Well, let me tell you. The first time, I got a box in Nashville with like twenty of my friends. And we each paid what we would pay for like a regular ticket. And we all just ended up getting our own box. I literally contacted like a salesperson for the Nissan Stadium. Like I like went through just like the regular channels. The second time I bought them on StubHub three hours before. 
it was still very pricey. The third time a brand went and they, a brand called Tangle Teaser, they had purchased a box and filled it with influencers and content creators. So that okay. was that. And I think I will be going one more time. I'm not sure when. The fuck? I know. Oh, yeah. No, you, the thing is with, with the Taylor tickets, like you can't cut any lines. Like you just have to pay for it. Well, no, I'm, that's fine. I'm just like, I don't, I didn't want to just like have a regular seat. I wanted to like, I want to, yep. I want to purchase yep. the best experience. Yes, yes. And, and I actually purchased the best experience on StubHub. Okay. That's, I would say my best tickets. So you're saying that when, she, when she's in LA, I should day of? Yep. So like not the day before, it's like. No, just get dressed. Like I was, no. I, I knew I was going to go. No, no. And then as I'm doing my makeup, we bought the tickets. We were monitoring all day. But what if you couldn't find the tickets and you got ready for nothing? And like, that's such a letdown. Like I would have found, like one thing about me, like I would have found the tickets. Can't you do it for me? I'll yeah, give you my yeah, credit yeah. card info. For sure, as long as I can <laughs> buy one for myself. Like, sure. No, real talk, that would be my payment to you. Uh, by the way, done. Come John. to California. We are thinking, me and Margo, um, just depending on like what, what happens with Jackie's like birth schedule, we are yeah. really hoping to be, be in LA for the August shows. Great. For Taylor. Yeah. Great. So maybe I'll see you there. So maybe you literally will be there. Yeah. Okay. I'm let's, hoping to be. Let's work on we'll this. We'll coordinate. Okay. Um, make sure you're following Stassi on all platforms. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Tomorrow we are in studio with Jax, which is so exciting. She hasn't been in studio in a while. So thank you so much for listening to the Toast and Lenny Morning Show. We deliver the fast stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, Zoom, Stitcher, Public Radio, I read podcasts, 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 all my Boston girlies tonight for our spritz event and have a great day. Love ya. Bye.